Did... Did you hear that? There's something down here. We have to pull out now, he said. Stow that talk, Sergeant, or I'll take your rockers. She was clearly delusional about that bit, and it was probably a giant rat. We face down worse than that, Winter replied. How can you not see that she is not delusional? There is something down here. We have to leave now, the medic angrily said in response. Well, doctor, good news for you. You're escorting her out. Go grab two soldiers of your choosing and take Sweet's top side, Winter ordered. The medical side in relief. Yes, sir. Any orders after that? Stay topside and tend to Sweet. Winter finished. The medic saluted and took and took Sweet's right foreleg and wrapped it before around her neck so he could carry her. Ocean, on me. Let's go, Winter ordered, before pulling out his rations. As if on cue, second squad doing a ration check. Roger that. I read loud and clear. Check, check. We found Sweet Cinnamon. She's alive, but delirious. Keep an eye out for a large rat. Shoot on sight. We copy. Passing word along first squad. Watch your back. Radio check in another two minutes. The radio scratched out. Then it's silent. Winter tuned it to third and fourth squad frequency. All units, all units, regroup. At the shack. One survivor found and sent on her way under guard. Repeat, all units regroup group at the shack. We ha are going further in. He ordered before, hooking it the radio back to on his armor. He and Ocean soon arrived and back at the abandoned shack. Everyone is tired looking and ready to go home. So the information about a finding survivor was welcomed. All right, everyone, we are going to find one more pony and we can leave and you can all get a good night's rest. We only have one lead and one final pony whereabout. A tape we found showing her fleeing from a giant rat that tunneled over there. We will do a diamond down the way and eventually spread out. We have eight hours left. Everybody, let's make them count. Diamond! He ordered. Every pony gets into diamond formation. Winter, taking his place. Advance! They advance down the tunnel. Headlamps shining their the way. Every now and then, the heartbeat sensors would go off. But they shrugged it off to bats and rats. Considering how fast they moved across the sensory screen... The farther down they went, down the tunnel they got, the colder it got. Eventually, some ponies started getting goosebumps. They spent the next 15 minutes going down the tunnel, but soon they heard something. The heartbeat sensor goes off. The location of the heartbeat? Directly in front of them. Everyone ready their weapons and advance forward. The sensors picking up their beeps. The sensors have a 30 foot radius on them. Any heartbeat that still, any heartbeat that still beats enters that radius, cause the sensors to go off. The light their headgear produced began to make out a pony's form. It wasn't looking at them, but rather hoofing the walls in front of her. In the end, it was a dead end. There was a rustic old style flintlock laying at her hooves. She turned to the, greet the soldiers, sporting a calm, collective smile. And now illusions. <laughs> Ain't that grand? She said. That must be honey sparkles. I'm glad to see there's another survivor. Come on. We're gonna get you out of here, Winter said. Starting towards her, she stopped by aiming her flintlock at him. Illusions or no, you're not gonna save me. Nothing can save me now. I'm doomed. They have not found me yet, but they will. There's not enough rats down here to sustain me either. So if you, they don't find me, I'll starve. Leave before you trigger the ire of those who's watching in the darkness. She said, her eyes twitched. What? Who are they? Listen, just drop your weapon. I know what you must be going through, but we found sweet cinnamon. She is safe. We are going to get you out of here. Just drop the weapon and let's go. We'll give you some something noche. 
on, on the way, Winter said, giving the nonverbal order to lower the weapons. There was a pile of dead, r gutted rats on the ground. Sweetie is safe, sweetie is safe. No one is safe. Not you, not sweetie. Sweet, not the rats. Not me, no one. Not even the survivor. Sur survey team. They watch, they learn, they judge. They hunger, no one is safe. They will descend unless you leave. This is their home. You triggered anger when you entered. You triggered peace when you leave. Everyone is happy. I'm happy. They are happy. She said, her smile not flattering. Okay, you've been down here for three days. You're delusional from isolation and dehydration. Come on. We can get you help, Winter replied. Dehydration? First? The rat's blood sustained me. They are my friends. I'm not isolated. They come to feed on their dead brethren. When I make friends and feed with them, and I'll see them on the other side, I will. She said, listen to yourself. We can help you. I... No, you can't. They have been following and watching since you were entered. They have decided that you must die. They are coming now. Your fate is sealed. She said, putting the barrel of the flintlock against her chin. You can't help me. They can't. You can't help yourself. You're all dead. She said, wait, wait, don't. Winter yell, galloping towards her. It was too late. She pulled the trigger, adding her blood and brains to the wall of decorations. He stared wide-eyed to the mess in front of him. He couldn't prevent this. Should he have been faster? He looked up to the wall, mouth agapes. Save, Save yourself. yourself. They, they are, are coming. coming. They watched. They hunger. It read, bloody adding to it. He suddenly, he shuddered and looked down at himself. Her blood was on his armor, his headgear. He could smell the iron and taste the copper. He had just witnessed a pony committing suicide. He felt shame, guilt, anger, sadness. He thought he could have prevented this. Sir, a female voice pipped up, knocking him out of his fearful stare. He shook his and wiped his face off. The blood was still smeared on it, changing his pristine white coat to a blood red one with white splotches. He turned and looked to the source. It was the raw recruit, Private Ocean Dust. She was scared. Sir, what did she mean? They are coming, and we're dead, she asked, her slit pupils staring into his. She waited. She wanted a straight answer, a truth, and one she was going to get. Every soldier was looking to him for a response. I, nothing. It had to be enough then. She was lost in isolation, dehydrated, confused. She was crazy. He stammered out. In his whole career, noting on the magnitude occurred. No pony he had ever had to go find ever shot themselves with some old technology's pistol. No pony ever talked about imaginary creatures. Nothing like this ever happened. He had always dealt in these situations with confused or isolated madness, but this was different. Something was go wrong. Oh, so, so wrong. He gave her a hopeful look, which dispelled some of her fear. She trusted him. He pulled out his radio, putting on first and second quad frequency. All units, all units. Be advised. Mission complete. Finally, HVT found Shishi committed suicide in front of me. Consumed mad rambles. First and second squad. Regroup at the point where we split. Body recovery is now a priority. How copy? He reported into the radio. Threading filled his voice. The leader could feel it. 10-4. Both squad leaders say before the radio. After a few seconds of silence, Winter hooked his radio back up. All right. Everybody. 
Someone grabbed the body and I... He cut off by the radio. Sir, we have contact. They... They are ripping us apart. Ah, get it off me. For the love of... Ah! Nightblaze, squad leader of... First squad screamed out from the radio. Gunfire pitched in the... And though, in through the background. Second squad leader, Divine Honor, then pitched in. Enemy contact! What the hell are these things? Shit! Shit! It's got me! Ugh! My leg! Ah! Help me! Help! It was cut off there. They can only guess what happened to her. The soldiers all looked at Winter. Honor, please! What's going on? What happened? Who is attacking you? He asked into the radio, static being his reply. A screech catches everybody's attention. It was really high and soul-piercing. It came from the direction they came from. The soldiers began new to murmur among themselves, some with fear, some with surprise. But there was one understood, cocking back of some pony's handgun hammer. Sir, I, I got something on the sensors. Ocean said, looking at her rifle, heartbeat sensors. It was beeping, not rapid, but steadily. Sir, it's coming towards us, and at a fast rate. She said, hyperventilating. What was going on? What is this? What happened to first and second squad? Sir, it's right on top of us. What? She started, but was interrupted as something sprang from the dark. Something bipedaled. It pinned her and started biting and shredding her. Her scream pierced Winter's soul. Every soldier stared in shock at the creature. It was red, beaded eyes, a monkey-like face, wingspans of ten feet. It stood two feet tall, taller than the, that of the ponies. It clawed, elongated, and sharp-looking, and it was killing their own. Their shock was broken when bullets ranged out from behind them. These bullets propelled into the creature's skin. It shrieked in pain and ran back into the darkness, leaving the bloody, limped body of Private Ocean Dusk. The sensor stopped beating, meaning it was a good distance away. Winter's revolver smoked. He had fired three rounds into the creature's skull, yet it still lived. He was breathing heavy. Had one of his own died? Had he sat there and watched as two ponies died, yet taking only action on the second one? He regained his sense, holstered his weapons, and galloped over the oceans. Miraculously, she was still alive, bleeding profusely. Her coat was shredded, her neck pierced, her eyes, one of her eyes, taken. In the small amount of time the creature had smalled her, it did so much damage. It was a testament to Luna herself that the, this bat pony was still lived. She used her good eyes to look at Winter. So, I, I think I, I am all right. She asked, blood leaking out of her mouth. Winter couldn't answer. He contemplated her, his word. He had none. What could he say? You'll be all right. Everything is fine. Just a flesh wound. No. No, no one of these words would do. He just grunted and looked down at her helmet. It was busted, dented in. She couldn't wear it now. Am I, am I gonna die? She asked once again, but there had no words. Rather, he just contemplated what he should say. I, I don't want to die, she said, her voice breaking, tears welling up in her one good eye. His soldier looked to him for answers. What he would say right now was all that mattered. If he said she was going to die, then she would. His soldiers would lose their respect and morals would plummet. He would be telling the truth, but die doing so. Would he lie? Moral would be better. She would still die, and they would still die. Was lying the situation would preferred? have the same ending. No, we are not gonna die. Not Oceans, not me, not Cherry, not anyone else. Winter decided. He had his answer to her quarrel. No, 
You're going to be alright. You're going to get out of here. Gonna get medical attention and see your family again. You're going to live. Just stay calm. You have my word. He said. And he meant it. The heartbeat sensor went off again, this time signing multiple heartbeats. They were approaching at an alarming rate. Screeching, anger, noise, fast steps. All those rangs from the darkness. Ocean began screaming, a scream of pure terror. Soldiers, make ready the f and fire at it. At will, he ordered. He then looked down at Ocean. She just stared at him, up at him, smiling slightly, as if she knew. She expected he would make good on his word. He turned back, saw his troops. Earthbound ponies standing on their hind legs, rifles at the ready. Ponies capable of flight were hovering. The screech were getting louder. Signals were approaching. Winter grabbed Ocean's shoulders and began dragging her out, causing her to scream, a scream of pain. Cherry come out up from the crowd of soldiers assisting in the endeavor to pull the wounded mare back. Wish we had that medic now, uh-huh. Cherry said, trying to lighten the situation with a laugh. Winter just glared at her. Cherry, lock it up. Contact, contact, the... One soldier yelled, then gunfire rang out. Battle rifles assaulted. Rifles and handguns began firing into the darkness. Screams of some kind of animal, like a dying something sounded off. Put pressure on her wounds, Winter ordered Cherry. She looked at him quizzically. What wounds? There are many. Pick one. Pick the bloodiest fucking womb and put pressure on it. She'll survive if we can get her to the top side. But we need to move now, Winter replied. Cherry slung her rifle on onto her back and started putting pressure on the piercing of Ocean's neck. That's where the blood was mostly coming from. Move! Where the fuck are we to go? That's the only way out, and those things were cover have to cover it. She said, Sir, doesn't matter. We will cut our way through if we have to. Winter said he himself thought this was a terrible idea. But it's better than sitting around waiting to die. Might as well attempt an escape. Winter decided. If they can get far enough, he will just have to wing it. As long as he still draws breath, they will all escape alive. Fucking what? Cherry yelled. The gunfire stopped, as did the heartbeat sensors. They're backing off, one soldier yelled following by ponies cheers stop cheering save it for when we get out of here they will be back and we don't have enough ammo to hold off out we gotta move now while they're licking their wounds winter said carrying ocean sir with all due respect how are we gonna get past them we will cut our way through and shoot every not pony shape winter said looking over to the, his troops. Some were sitting down, hyperventilating. Sir, that's crazy! You have a better idea, Corporal? Some soldiers said. The other soldiers didn't respond. All right, good, Lieutenant. We'll move, we'll follow you to hell and back. Although, I think we already did that. So we should be following you to the light instead. The same soldier said. What's the plan? We have wounded and she lost blood fast. We need to move. There is a shack down the, the way. Big enough for all of us. If we can get inside and bar the entrance. We might be able to buy ourselves enough time to devise a full plan. Before any of you ask. No I don't have my plan figured out fully. Let's move. Advance. Shoot on sight. He ordered. He ordered soldiers. Began grumbling disagreement, but they all complied, and began advancing slowly, forming a defensive phalant around Winter as a wounded bat pony. Many so ponies were uneased. They were trained on how to handle bat bites, how to treat rabies if they weren't vaccinated, which they should be 
and is a requirement for underground scouts. They were trained to navigate in total darkness, all that, but they were never trained on what to do were they attacked by nocturnal creatures. Screams pierced the darkness. They were a good bit away, but it didn't take rocket scientists to know that they were getting ready for another assault. But the time that, that assault came, they were halfway to the opening with a shack. They were ready to f and fending it off. Thanks to the heartbeat sensors, there was a green blood stain on the, the ground up. There was green blood staining the ground, but there were no bodies. What the hell? What does it take to kill these things? One soldier remarked, panicked in his voice. They arrived to the o around, their heartbeat sensors going off like crazy. There were tons of these creatures in there. Go. Get to the shack and bar the damn doors. Move, move, move! Winter ordered, shining his headlamp on the shack. The soldiers began galloping towards the shack, shooting at everything that moved in the darkness. A few stopped to aid Winter. The screeching shrieks echoed in the dark. They were loud. The door bashed open, and the soldiers piled in, some smashing the windows, setting up zap rifles and battle rifles. Winter stumbled in, dragging the ocean by her shoulders on the other side. Soldiers carrying her to by her hind legs. Two other so soldiers were backing them up, walking backwards as they watched them for movement. They are in the mining area. With them, just unseen, Winter dust off the coach and carefully lies her down, giving her a nonverbal order to one soldier to put pressure on her neck bites. Soldiers tipped the bookshelf over and pushed it against the door. Okay, they didn't attack us. Maybe, maybe they'll leave us alone, one soldier asked. Or maybe they are waiting for us to separate. Then they pounce. Like, like timber wolves, another said. Lock it up, both of you. Whatever they are, they are keeping their distance. They might be afraid of our guns. I don't know. But one thing's for sure. We need to escape our radio topside. Let them know what's going on, Winter said, taking out his radio. Do you have a plan, sir? One soldier asked. No, I don't have a full figure. Winter stared. Hysterical bat pony interrupted. You don't have a plan? Didn't you hear the shrieking? Demons are coming to rape our skulls! She yelled. Calm down. Calm down. No, fuck you. We are going to die here. And I'm not going to... Err... Uh, the pony said, before staring down at... The barrel of her revolver, she gulped. Listen, you you panicking isn't helping. We have faced worse than this. During tra training, you were starved. Being hunted was part of your training. You might not have been trained for this exactly, but something from similar to this. Calm the hell down or I'll kill you myself. We are going to get out of this alive. And you panicking will imped that. It will drag us down. It will kill us. Not... No, you'll kill us. Winter said. Every soldier was looking at him. He had never threatened one of their his own before. So calm down, okay? Eh, okay? Winter finished, evil eyes looking at the panicked soldier. Uh, okay, yes, sir. I... I'm sorry, she said, looking down, the revolver disappearing back in Winter's holster. The situation was handled quickly. That's how he earned the respect of his peers. He turned on his radio. Sir, sir, what's going on down there? We attempted a radio check on first and second team, but no one replied back. A mayor's voice on the radio and said as soon as he switched it on. First and second squad is dead. We have been ambushed by unknown hostiles, and final HVT committed suicide in front of a, us. We are Oscar Mike'd to topside. Be ready for what to report it into the radio, but then the heartbeat sensor stopped beeping, causing every soldier to look at them. Are... are the... are they gone? Cherry Kiwi asked, looking out a window. Her headlamp illuminating the darkness outside. Nothing. I don't see anything. 
I think, I think they are, Trey said, looking back to the remaining soldiers. But something grabbed her through the window, something with sharp claws, and it pulled her out. She was screaming for help. Soldiers began firing at the creatures, but the bullets didn't scare it off. She dropped her helmet and began screaming at the creatures, dove its teeth into her neck. She begged for the soldiers to help. They tried, but the bullets didn't help any. It made it angrier. It pulled her into the dark, and her screams ended abruptly as a loud, wet thump is heard. Shit. They can slow their heartbeats. Fuck. Get away from the windows. Winter yelled, and the soldiers began complying, backing up away from the windows. The creatures started to attack the windows. Just the same, gunfires lit up the darkness as the ponies desperately attempted to fight off the evil in the mind. Some soldiers were starting to panic and went for the door, but loud banging on the it prevented them from leaving. Winter looked back at the radio. Was the mayor still talking? Sir, what's going on? What's all the commotion? Pony down, pony down, pony down! Repeat, count one casualty. Contact everywhere. Contacts everywhere. Heartbeat sensors no longer efficient. As these things can slow their heartbeat, Winter said. Roger that. We are coming in on a relief effort. What is your location? Do you have visual on charity? No, belay that. Do not enter the mines. You will be killed before you get to us. And no, Charlie conceals themselves in the dark. Winter relays. The gunfire still sounding off around him. Soldiers were screaming. Orders to their buddies. Some had tears in their eyes. Some were downright broken. Curled in safe corners. Crying. Winter could understand. This was the eardrums. Bleeding, shrieking. Blood curling screeches comes piercing the t and blood curdling screeches could pierce the toughest stallion. Then, what are your orders? Winter paused. When the mayor on the other side asked that, what could he do? A full retreat? Could he order them to blow the mine? Prevent the creature's escape? Condemn the soldiers inside to death? No, that wasn't viable options, but it did give him an idea though it wasn't, wouldn't be popular. Rig some C4 plastic explosions the entrance of the mine. Detonate it in 30 mics. If we don't arrive within the time frame, then blow the entrance and lock us in. Sir, what are you, what the fuck are you thinking? Sir, if we do this, then there is a good chance that we will be condemning you and your platoon to death, the radio voice said. Soldiers, when we give you an order, you better damn well follow it. Plant C4 and detonate it in 30 mics. We will be out in 20, Winter said, clicking the radio off to avoid further arguments. Sir! Sir! What the fuck? A corporal asked. I know, but we still have 20. But what if we don't? You, you're damning us! Trust me. You need to have the explosions ready. If we are to escape, just, uh, just hear me out. Whatever we walk into, we woke up in evil. Whatever the hell those creatures are, they are dangerous to the outside world. I finally figured out my plan. To escape, we need to go back the way we came. But these things will follow us. We will endanger the pony's topside. So we have C4 to detonate we escape, we blow the mine, the fuck shit down here is trapped permanently. Winter briefed, some soldiers murmured in agreement, some opposed. But what if we don't get out of the mine? Hell, Ocean will slow us down, one pony said. The soldier was keeping the pressure on Ocean's wound. Winter had considered this, but he is willing to take the risk. It's a risk we will have to take. Would you like to be the first left behind? Winter asked. The gunfire had ended, and the creatures had retreated into the darkness, and nodded of understanding. All right, unbar the damn doors. As soon as it opens, we need to move. Those things will take the opportunity to pounce. We move as fast and help those slower than you, Winter ordered. 
Some soldiers that went to unbar the door were stopped by opposing soldiers. Sir, that's a terrible idea. We got out there. We get picked off one by one until there is none of us left. That's f fucked. One soldier yelled. One yelled, yeah. Listen, if anyone dies first, it's me. I took an oath when I became a lieutenant. And, b and part of the oath was to die first before your truth. If you just listen to me, stop panicking, then we would already be out. Winter shot back. What about Cherry? She's dead, and you're still standing. The leader of the insurgents yelled. That was a spot of bad luck. I blame myself for her death. But that's... There is nothing we can do. Winter yelled, his revolver being illuminated by magic. This might end ugly, but if you want to argue, then how about this? You can stay and die, or you can fight and run, and have a possibility of living. It's your damn choice, but I want to save as many of you as possible. And it will be impossible if you all are against me. Trust in your CO, and we will escape. All in favor, following me outside? Raise your hoof! Winter yelled. Almost immediately, Ocean's bloody free hoof came up. A few other soldiers raised their hoof. All in favor of remaining and dying, raise your hoof, he ordered. But to his surprise, no one brought their hoof up. Not even the insurgent. Guess it was really... wasn't appealing. I take it. You all are going to listen to me now, Winter said with a smug grin on his face.